We begin worship this morning with our liturgy for Easter found on page 90 of the Moravian Book of Worship. I would invite you to stand. The Lord is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Sing this aloud, proclaim it to the ends of the earth. The Lord has set his people free. of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. Praise all that are glory and power to the one seated on the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. Jesus was handed over to death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification. Then what can separate us from the love of Christ? Can affliction or hardship? Can persecution, hunger, nakedness, peril, or sword? No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through Christ who loved us. For we are convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor heights, nor depths, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like this, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like this. We do not live to ourselves, and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, it is for the Lord that we live, and if we die, it is for the Lord that we die. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. For Christ died, rose from death, and lives again in order to be in order of the living and of the dead. We do not want you to be in any doubt about those who have died, or to grieve over them as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will with him those who have died. 
What we are saying, brothers and sisters, is this. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. What is sown is perishable. Is raised imperishable. What is sown in dishonor. Is raised in glory. What is sown in weakness. Is raised in power. What is sown a physical body. Then the saying that is written will be fulfilled. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus with Christ seek the things that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God set your minds on things that are above not on things that are of the earth for we have died and our lives are hidden with Christ in God God of peace who brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ the great shepherd of the sheep by the blood of the eternal covenant make us complete in everything good so that we may do your will working among us all that is pleasing in your sight through jesus christ to whom be the glory forever and ever amen in number 358 jesus christ is risen today 358 
We continue our worship with our stewardship of giving. Jesus Christ, you gave all for us on the cross, laying down your life that we might have life and have it abundantly, that we might be forgiven, that we might have open to us the doors of eternal life. Accept our offering as an act of worship, a sign of our gratitude. Use it to bless the work of this church and this community in the nation and in the world, that we might spread the good news that you brought into this world. In your name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Let us come to God in an attitude of prayer on this Easter Sunday. Gracious Lord Jesus Christ, you are the firstborn of the new creation, the model of a new humanity, full of grace, compassion, empathy, gentleness, mercy, 
strength, hope, love. We pray that as your followers, we might in some small way reflect your perfect example and embody these virtues in our own lives. On this Easter Sunday, we give you thanks for the gift of eternal life, which you have given for us. We claim that promise on behalf of our loved ones, who since the last Easter we were able to gather together, passed into your more immediate presence. Lord God, be with all who mourn. Sustain them in their loss. Turn their hearts again to hope. And may they see the day when joy predominates again in their lives. Be with all who are ill, injured, or recovering from surgery. Grant to them healing, patience, and strength. Be with caregivers, especially family caregivers, caring for sick spouses, for parents, grandparents, or children. Hasten the day when your will shall be done on earth as it is in heaven, when all shall live in peaceable habitations, when none shall make us afraid, afraid, when all of us shall be free from want and from fear. These things we pray in the name of our risen Savior. Amen. reading is from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in. And he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. And as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting there where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. But she, as she, when she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but did not know that it was Jesus. And Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabune, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, 
I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and she told them that he had said these things to her. And then a reading from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 10, verses 34 to 43. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message that he sent, sent to the people of Israel, to preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, and everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Amen. Crown him with many crowns, number 405, please stand.
how shall we respond to the empty tomb? How should we respond to the empty tomb? Scripture tells us that early on the first day, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw, to her dismay, rather than her joy, that the stone had been rolled away from the door to Jesus' tomb. And dare any of us fault her for her misgivings? Early this morning, a number of us went up to God's Acre at the other end of the street and celebrated Jesus' resurrection and greeted the dawn from that location. It is a familiar place for many in this congregation. How would we respond if we had buried our loved one in the evening on Friday and then had gone up early on the first day of the week on Sunday morning and found things not as we had left them when the grave had been closed at the funeral, but rather found instead an open hole in the ground. And that is what Mary found. Would we immediately jump to the conclusion that our loved one had been raised by God from the dead? Or would we not rather, as Mary did, fear that the tomb had been despoiled, desecrated, robbed? Certainly it would be in line with the story thus far. The story from the time of Judas' betrayal at the Last Supper on Good Friday through the sham trial before Herod and Pontius Pilate to the mocking by the cohort and then the mob. All that brutality, that bullying, that ridiculing accounts with what we know about the worst of human behavior. Mary's words echo the misgiving that here, true to form, the detractors, the mockers, the resistors of Jesus have compounded their abuse of him while living by desecrating his body after his death. But this is not Good Friday. Humanity's hand has been played out. They have done their worst. It is now God's turn. The tomb is empty not because of grave robbery, but because of resurrection. In the words of the Apostle Paul, the Creator has just declared Jesus to be the Son of God by power, according to the spirit of holiness, by resurrection from the dead. And yet, Mary is not immediately able to grasp this. And if we are truthful, the miracle and the mystery of the resurrection is something that challenges each one of us as well. For it is good news that is seemingly too good to be true. Too visionary for us to have a firm grasp upon it. How is it that we are to see the empty tomb and respond to it? In the early Moravian church, back in the 1490s, there was a theologian by the name of Luke of Prague. And he first articulated in its full form the essentials of the Moravian understanding of Christian faith. The first thing that happens is that God acts as God acted on that first Easter. God believed the early Moravians creates. God redeems through the Son. And God sustains through the Holy Spirit whom Jesus promised as he was saying farewell to his disciples 
after the Last Supper. We then respond with faith, with hope, and with love. And I believe this ties in beautifully with the resurrection account as it comes to us from the Gospel according to St. John. Because Mary would not have been able to recognize her risen Savior were it not for her response in faith, in hope, in love. She had faith in Jesus as her teacher, as her mentor, as her friend that had been with her over the course of several years. And that faith was strong, but it needed something to help it mature into a hope, a living hope that could grasp the reality that God had raised Jesus from the dead. And that something is evident in her words as recorded in Scripture. We see in the Scripture and we hear when it is read her anguish at losing her beloved teacher. She loved Jesus as the other disciples did. And because she loved Jesus, her heart was open to the working of God. She feared that she had lost the one that she had loved. But when she encountered the love of the risen Savior, when he gently and lovingly called her by name, she was able to respond, teacher, Rabuni. And it was that response of love, of God's love reaching out and her love reaching back that powered her ability to hope, to believe that God had done this marvelous thing and that God would continue to do marvelous things through the church that he brought about through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Her faith, strengthened by love, had given birth to hope. A hope that would sustain her and millions of others throughout the centuries. A hope that is still available to us when we open our hearts in love to receive that hope from God. It is said that we cannot, by our own reason and strength, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ or come to him, but that the Holy Spirit empowers us and dwells within us, transforming our hearts that we might believe. But if we need look for evidence, perhaps the best evidence is sitting around us, and others who choose to follow Jesus Christ. Because we are the heirs to the generations which have gone before us. And if we go all the way back to the very beginning, we find a small group of disciples who was terrified about what would happen to them after their rabbi, their savior, their messiah was crucified. And yet... Because of the experience of that first Easter, they went on to risk all, even their lives, confident that just as Jesus had been raised from the dead, they too, one day, would be raised from the dead to greet their God in the flesh. This is the miracle, the mystery of the resurrection. This is the essence of Easter. God's love embodied and born again, raised again, that we might be filled with hope and love today and always. Amen. We conclude our worship this morning with all three verses of sing Hallelujah, Praise the Lord. It is hymn number 543, 543. Please stand.
to keep us from falling, who is able to make us stand without blemish in the presence of his glory with rejoicing. To the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory, majesty, power, and authority before all time, and now and forever. Amen.